Button Bucket Sky. It's written by Jacqueline Briggs Martin, illustrated by Vicki Joe Roggenbaugh. Button Bucket Sky. Button. Every day was the same in Annie Livermore's small house on Six Penny Road. She ate chicken soup. She mended her clothes with thread and buttons, dusted the chairs and the old piano. The best part of each day came when Annie and her cat Hector sat outside under the big oak tree. Annie said that the tree had its own music. Sometimes the two friends napped beneath the rustling leaves. One afternoon, Annie Livermore dreamed that the old oak tree was sick, and she gave it chicken soup, but the soup was no cure. When she woke, she looked up at the tree, the last in the neighborhood, and she knew just what to do. Hector, come with me, she said. We're wasting our time with mending and dusting. We are late with our work. Hector stretched. He did not love work, but he poked along behind Annie Livermore and watched for a chance to dig holes. When they saw Harriet Grace kicking a stone, Annie said, Come with us! We're picking up buttons, shiny brown buttons, with old oak tree songs inside. Harriet Grace was bored with that stone, so she followed along behind Harriet. Little Sam was on a flat ground watching clouds, but he jumped up to join Annie's crew and look for treasures. He could hold on his hand. The four walked down Sixpenny Road in and out of town. Harriet Grace found acorns under a tree where people tacked notes to each other under a tree where two friends brought milk to a stray kitten she filled her hat with acorns and didn't want to stop. Little Sam picked up acorns under a tree where a ladybug walked on his arm, under a tree where clumps of butterflies rested in the full sun. He filled his pockets with acorns and thought he would never have enough. Hector dug holes under park benches and picnic tables too. Annie Livermore picked up acorns under a tree where children ate pickle sandwiches and laughed at riddles. Under a tree where a dog ran off with a loaf of bread. And under a tree where a man sang a song to a crying baby. They brought the acorns to Annie Livermore's porch. Some were long and thin, while others were no bigger than a fingernail. We are rich with acorns, said little Sam. They are beautiful as polished pianos, Harriet said. Annie got out her big wash tub and filled it with water. They poured the acorns into the water and saved the ones that sank to the bottom of the tub. Annie put them in bags of sand and stored them in her cool cellar. In the spring, we'll plant these buttons in buckets and pots. Annie said. Bucket. When the snow was gone, the yards were yellow with dandelions. The children went back to Annie Livermore's. All winter, little Sam had saved ice cream tubs from the sweet shops on Sixpenny Road. And he had found a teapot with a broken spout. Harriet Grace brought her father's old work shoe with a scuffed out toe her Aunt Lucy's straw hat, and a rusted bucket that had carried toads to school. Annie Livermore sat on her porch and scrubbed her cracked soup bowls, her plant pots, her berry buckets. Hector dug holes in the soft earth under the porch. <clears throat> the friends put soil in all of their tubs, buckets, and bowls, even the shoe. They dropped acorns in each one and added more soil. After a few weeks, the tree seeds sprouted tiny shoots. Harriet Grace saw the shoots look like toothpicks and wondered if they would even grow. Little Sam called them, a, called them bucket forest for ladybugs and for spiders. In the fall, they set the buckets and the pots and other plants in the ground 
and covered them with leaves and grass. In the winter it snowed, and the air was so cold that birds wouldn't fly. Little Sam worried that the trees would freeze. Harriet Grace wanted to put down blankets, but Annie Livermore said the leaf cover would be enough. And in the spring, when they raked away the leaves and the grass, they found tiny trees. For another year, the trees grew, and the children grew too. Harriet Grace climbed an apple tree and called herself a giant. She watered the trees and told them stories. Little Sam built birdhouses and bird feeders. He gave the trees plant food and sang songs to them. Sky. In the third spring, Annie Livermore said, it's time to plant our trees. So Annie, Harriet Grace, Little Sam, and Hector walked along Sixpenny Road looking for places where oak trees could grow. Hector dug all the holes. <laughs> Little Sam planted trees where there were neighbors to carry water, water in jelly jars, where people would go out in slippers in the early morning to see if the tree had grown. Harriet Grace planted oak trees in, lo in lonely places that needed songs of tree-hopping birds in noisy places that needed trees to quiet the bustle of cars and trucks. Annie Livermore and Hector planted trees where children would roll and run and carry acorns home in their pockets, and in places where people would come with cousins and picnic baskets. The years went by, Annie Livermore, Hector, and their friends went out many times to gather acorns. Hector dug dozens of holes. The trees on Sixpenny Road, tr the trees on Sixpenny Road, trees in and out of town, they grew way into the sky. Little Sam and Harriet Grace learned to hear the music of the nesting birds and the rustling leaves. More seasons passed. Annie Livermore grew very, very old, and Hector was the oldest cat under the sun. One fall day, while napping under their favorite tree, they were awakened by little Sam, well, no longer little, and Harriet Grace. They had brought their families and best friends back to Sixpenny Road to walk along the trees and pick up acorns. These are buttons with oak tree songs inside, they said. We will plant them and wait to hear the music of trees. Annie Livermore smiled, and so did the oldest cat under the sun.